Today, I'm gonna to talk about what I'm packing for my Charleston, South Carolina workshop and how I'm gonna carry all of this on the plane in my Nia Evo 60C carry-on compatible backpack. Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson. Welcome to this week's video. Well, this video, when it drops, I'm gonna be in South Carolina with Rick LePage, David Archer, and a group of 12 awesome photographers, leading them through the swamps and Charleston's old city, doing some street photography, photographing the culture and the swamps and wildlife and birds of South Carolina. And that's a kind of a complicated trip to pack for. Um, and I'm constantly getting people asking me, is your Nia Evo 60C actually uh, airline carry-on compatible. And I can tell you that from trips on to Europe, throughout Europe and the United States, all over Mexico, Canada, it's been no problem getting it into the plane. You think about those huge roller bags that people are bringing on. Those are the ones that they're really after. Generally, if it's on your back and it's not some kind of a massive multi-day backpacking backpack, they've got no issue with you carrying it on. And this one definitely fits within the requirements as long as you don't zip out the expansion ports or open up the dry bag expansion. You know, it's only then that it's truly 60 liters. When it's collapsed down, it's more like 40, 42 liters. Um, so I'm going to show you how I've got everything packed in here for this trip, which is more of a trip where I'm just concerned about having this stuff carry on with me on the plane so that I'm taking care of it. Uh, but I'm going to be mostly vehicle based during the workshop. You know, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you another cool way that you can pack this pack with a new product from Naiva, the extra large RCI that'll give you top access to keep even my Z9 and my 800 PF with the hood ready to go in the bag vertically, accessible vertically, just in an instant if you were hiking and doing a trip where it's really gonna be on your back, getting into someplace rough with wildlife and you want instant access and don't wanna have to put everything together. So I'll show you that at the end for those of you that are interested, more of a backpacking solution. This is more just get it on the plane solution. And, and I'll jump in and just start kind of taking the stuff out of the bag that I've got in here. You know, in the, the front horseshoe compartment. In, in this packing job, I wouldn't be able to get as much in, but the same RCI would fit in the new Nia Evo 50C as well, which is pretty cool. But it would virtually fill it, so there wouldn't be a whole lot of room for other stuff. But, you know, I'm bringing the, the 60C because I just have a lot of stuff coming in. I'll just lay it down so we can open this guy up without things falling out. And the horseshoe front pocket really lets you get a lot of stuff in. Uh, in this little pocket that's always easy access outside the bag. I've got my headlamp and some tools and a carabiner and just stuff I might potentially need. I have some stuff that's always in this bottom of this horseshoe compartment. You know, I got a, a rain cover for the Z9. I got some extra toilet paper, a big lens cleaning cloth, towel, microfiber towel. The little beaver tail that fits on the front of this to stow, you know, a wet jacket or something on the outside of the bag. It just clips in place. I've got a couple of spare batteries for the Nikon ZF since I'm bringing that camera along. And these little organizer pockets, I got a couple cool things. I've got, uh, well, there's a tool, but I've got my Z9 spare battery in case I need it, as well as a 20,000 milliamp anchor power delivery capable charging brick that'll actually run the Z9. Say I was doing some night work uh, or I just wanted to recharge the battery while it's in the bag in between shoots. I don't, I'm not bringing a, a hydration bladder or, or my laptop in here. I'll carry a little separate laptop bag to go under my seat. I'll take my Timbuktu bag. All right, so that's all going just like that. Boom. I'll leave that top compression strap undone so that we can just really easily access this big clamshell top compartment. That opens up and I've got my rain cover in there in the mesh pocket that comes with the Naiva 60C that, that fully waterproof, you know, non-breathable. This whole thing's DWR coated, eco-nil fabric that's made out of recycled fishing nets. It'll take a little storm, but the big heavy duty rain cover, you know, like a backpacking backpack rain cover completely shields you from the rain if you got in a downpour. So inside my hood, my two-stage Carl Zemlin hood for the Nikon uh, 800PF, I've got this little microfiber bag that my ZF fits in and I've got both the small rig grip uh, and the really right stuff universal L bracket with the QD on there. I'm mainly gonna use this as a backup camera and potentially to do some filming if we do a little ATS work down there. I really 
really like filming with it. Oh, I still have this little, this little card wallet that I love from Manfrotto that's got both CF Express uh, and SD cards in it. I'll just toss that to the side. Um, I also, in that top clamshell pocket, have my Mirrorless Mover 10 uh, from Think Tank with the uh, Leica Q3 inside of it. So, and a spare battery and some tools, and it's got its really right stuff. L-Grip on there, uh, spare memory card, all that kind of stuff. This is kind of my whole kit for the Q3. So that's all stored up here in this easy access zip top. Then I'll spin it around and give you a nice easy view of the back clamshell opening. That has two pockets in it. In the lower pocket, I keep my little uh, radio trigger, my Velo radio trigger transmitter and receiver for the Z9 that screws into the 10 pin port. And I've also got some spare lens caps for all the different lenses as well as 77 to 82 uh, millimeter magnetic adapter rings for my case filters. Um, tucked in here, just to keep safe, I've got my 1.4 teleconverter for the Nikon Z system that'll work with the 800 millimeter lens or my 100 to 400. I've got my more precious than gold LumaLabs QD loop strap for anybody who's been trying to get one of these. They're difficult to get. Um, Love mine. I wish there was an easy way to get more people using them. Um, pull this strap. I've got the 800 PF easy access right here. Boom, ready to go. I'll set that over there. And that's got the new Carl Zemlin version of his cap. He's made these for all the big lenses. So if you've got a 400 TC or an eight, a 600 TC or an 800 PF or a big lens from another company, I don't think there's a nicer accessory out there than Zemlin's big pinch caps. Uh, and those pinch caps fit right into his custom hood mount ring that just goes into the original hood. And it clips their, their, the mount ring, clips right on there. It's just so nice. And then it's got a rubberized coating so that when you set your lens down, you're not afraid of it slipping. Um, really, really nice. All right. So underneath there, I've got my case magnetic filter set. I've got a Leica adapter ring, that 49 to 82 millimeter. I've got my um, circular polarizer, three, six, and 10 stop neutral density filters. Those are color coded blue, gold, and red. And then a neutral night filter uh, in there along with the UV filter. So those are all ready to go right there. I've got my 100 to 400 ready to go with its hood on it and its uh, Kirk custom foot. That just has a nice little pinch, uh, the elastic strap that keeps it safe in there. I've got my Z9 tucked in there, Kirk L bracket in, my, uh, my Hoodman eye cup folded around backwards so that it fits in there nice and slick. I've got my 24 to 120 sort of jack of all trades little lens that'll just about do anything I want it to. And then on this trip, I'm also bringing my 10. 5 1.4 F mount macro, or not macro, my F mount 104 1.5, 105.1.4. .5, and the reason for that is there's a moment when we're in the South Carolina Center for Birds of Prey when they fly these owls through the woods around us. Um, you know, they're, it's a rehabilitation center where they bring in injured animals, they rehabilitate them, put them back in the wild. But sometimes some of the species can't be rehabilitated, just won't make it back into the wild. And so they have these owls there that are, that are residents and they'll fly them through the woods for us from perch to perch. And it's a tight quartered kind of beautiful set of woods. And it really does require a little shorter lens to get the good shots of it. And having that 1.4 aperture lets me blur the trees and get beautiful backgrounds with just the owls sharp while they're flying. All right, so that's essentially it. Um, people ask me, you know, how much does that whole thing weigh? <laughs> and you know, it's, it's a good 32 pounds. I weighed it right before I took everything out of it, but that's mitigated a bit by these super cushy waist belt and the fact that it cinches around and puts all the weight right on your hips. You can adjust these nice comfortable shoulder straps up or down for your torso length from waist to shoulders. Uh, and this is a true nice harness system. It lets the weight go on to your hips. You know, I'm in the middle position. Someone taller than me would go to the higher position. Someone shorter than me would go to the lower position. Um, this bag is comfortable to wear with weight. The harness is built 
with intention uh, of you carrying weight on it. And it really, really does work well. All right. So that's how I'm packing the pack for this particular trip. It's probably going to be how I pack for Costa Rica. That's mostly vehicle based too. But, but let me show you an alternate way that I would pack some long lenses in my Z9 uh, for a more backpacking focused trip where you're hiking in search of wildlife and you want instant access to the lens. Oh, you know, one more thing. I'm going to be bringing my big, tall fluid head, my seven pound, uh, 71 inch fluid head system in case I want to use long lens doing some of the stuff that we're doing with wildlife. Although I find I can handhold this 800 amazingly well. But I'll be packing that in, plus we might be doing some low light work around town. And I'm also going to bring this medium removable camera insert. And literally, if you just pop these four Velcro tabs right here, just peel out. This large camera insert will pull out. You take the lid off of this one, which I've got a few things packed that I'm not so worried about checking in the big roller bag with my tripod. Um, you know, these, these, um, these removable camera inserts, they just pop, the doors pop right off them. I have a, a lid for the large inside the bag behind it. And in here, you know, I've got my cleaning supplies and I've got a couple little lenses I'm taking for video stuff and, and ones that I'm testing out this little Velcro, Veltrox uh, 20 millimeter autofocus lens. I've got the FTZ adapter for the 105 1.4. I've got some filters for the 800 just in case I want to polarize. Um, I've got a little 15 millimeter TT Artisans DX lens I've been testing that's really been surprising me um, with its image quality. But anyway, I'll pull the big large RCI out of this bag and I will stick this medium one in, and the medium one will hold my 100 to 400, the Z9, 24 to 120, the 105, 1.4, and the 24 to 120, or I could get rid of the 105, 1.4 and stick in the, uh, the, the, the Z, the Q3, uh, all in this little bag in this pack, and then the pack will compress in even more by just pulling its upper compression strap, be a little smaller and lighter if I'm carrying it, you know, on a mission where I don't necessarily need the 800 or I'm carrying the camera on the 800 um, and I don't need to have as much stuff with me. And then I'll use the big, the big RCI as kind of a storage locker in the car and in the room to put the gear that I'm not using on that particular day in that big one. Before I get on the plane to come home, I'll repack the whole thing like this to carry everything on the plane safely with me. I'll do that same thing in Costa Rica too. Oh, and I didn't mention earlier, you know, links to all the gear that I'm showing, both that came out of the bag and the bag itself are over at my website at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. You can just click right here. Um, this particular product I'm about to show you is a Naya Evo uh, extra large removable camera insert. It's a newer thing that they're doing. We don't have any of them in the States yet, but they can ship them through their international site. I'll put a link to that in this video's full description, and you'd be shocked. It usually gets here within two days when you order it. Um, but let me just show you what it enables. It's perfect, you're out hiking around, suddenly you see wildlife, boom, you set this thing out. One of the nice things about Naiva bags is how they stand upright. They have a nice flat bottom, the way the RCIs work. And I'm actually gonna lay it down in a way that you can see what's going on when I open up the top. This is, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have two uh, Naiva bags. This is my first one before they came out with the eco nil fabric. You open the top and the, the top part of this RCI folds open. It can zip shut if you want to, but in here I've got my Luma Labs QD strap because I might want to sling the camera from the lens and I have the camera with its hood installed on it on the 800 in there. All I got to do is pull that big lens cap and I'm shooting if it's something really critical. If I have a second I can pop the, uh, the Zemlin hood off, spin it over, install it, you know, either in its short iteration or its long iteration. So boom, you know, there it is, ready to go. Um, it's nice, quick, easy, your bag's on the ground. The other nice thing is that it has two access ports. So I can get my 100 to 400 out and switch too. I can pop the body off, you know, if what I really want is the 100 to 400, well, it's mounted on the 800, but I could just pop the body switch and twist it without even taking the 800 out of the bag, grab the 100 to 400 and mount that up. It's all just easy access right up the top there. And then the extra large RCI, it fills the entire 60C bag. You know, it still is carry-on compatible. You could fly with it like this, but it fills 
the entire main compartment of the bag. And granted, it lets you carry that big lens in there. Alongside, you can see my 100 to 400 is right there. If I open up its back compartment, I've got the uh, 24 to 120 right there. I've got my 14 to 24. You know, it's a great way to hike with your kit in search of wildlife and still have the potential for doing some landscapes and just scenic work while you're out in a beautiful place. So a pretty cool system. I just love how modular these bags are and how easy it is to just pull these Velcro tabs and switch and swap. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have two of the, the, the Naivo 60Cs. This is from the original pre Eco nil days. This is the first bag I had. And then I have the Reb one that's Eco nil, the new version that they do all their bags in with that sustainable fabric made out of uh, recycled fishing nets. So pretty cool stuff. If you're interested in any of our Night Evo stuff, including the new 50C, you can click right here to go to the Night Evo portion of our website. But if you want this big extra large RCI, you got to run over to their site. I'm going to put my affiliate link to their site in this video's full description. And it's also over, uh, you know, on my website at that ATS links page. So, all right. I hope everybody is out there having a good time, staying creative, staying safe. I know that we're having a blast in Charleston uh, while you're watching this video. Uh, we've got some really cool trips coming. Mazatlan and the Total Eclipse. Uh, if you missed that tutorial that I did last week on some tips and tricks for training to shoot the eclipse and making sure that you're practiced and ready, um, you, can, you can see that video that was posted last week on this channel. Um, we'll be doing the Mazatlan workshop for the eclipse, obviously, April 8th, uh, and I'll do some post-production videos when that is done and we've all got our raw material to work with. Um, and then it's going to be Costa Rica, which I'm super excited about. I'll be packing similarly for that, but a little bit differently. Don't forget to sign up for our office hours. They're on Tuesdays, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can see when the next one is and sign up and leave a question right here uh, at this link or go down to the video's description. Go to HudsonHenry.com slash office hours. Uh, we'll be showing some, some images from Charleston from this trip, and we'll also uh, talk a little bit about some of the benefits of using Lightroom Classic instead of the new Lightroom CC. We'll talk about who the new Lightroom CC is for and who it's not for. Some of the things that you might give up uh, moving over to the new version of Lightroom that they're kind of pushing hard right now. So we'll talk about all that. We'll hear your perspectives. So join us for that, hudsonharry.com slash office hours. Um, anyhow, all right, everybody. Take care. We'll see you next week.